And starting a work is so different from the strength of finishing, you know, a, 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 a work. And so this is a very, very interesting year for us. But I'm going to be very, very quick. And in the culture of BWK, we press into receive the mind of God for our nation, for ourselves, for the church. We have a culture here where we believe that God is faithful to us. He would, you know, give us his mind. So I'm going to very quickly tell you what I, my experience has been of this year and what I do believe that this is what it is like for us or is going to be like or what we should be expecting. Now, it is the responsibility of you and I as God's children to bring heaven to earth and not to escape or have an escapist mindset of how we're going to... You know, you hear people, they say, oh, I hope I make heaven. And heaven is saying, I hope you make this earth really pretty for me. <laughs> God is saying, I hope. So many people want to escape to heaven, and heaven is saying, look, I want to come down here, right here. I want you to see, you know, the pattern of heaven and how Nigeria ought to be in my plan. So my year is always, you know, uh, beginning of the year is very, always very important time for me. And I, I watch the dream that I have, and that really tells me. Right from Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, you know, and the Greco-Roman uh, uh, New Year, our New Year as we know it, just seeking the mind of God. And um, at Rosh Hashanah, that is during Jewish New Year, September, the Lord was very categorical as he said, this is the year. So the Hebrew year 5776, you know, is this is the year, you know, for my people to go forward, you know, and all that that year represents in God's, in God's calendar, you know, not a time to teach it because we have a teacher in the house to bring the word. But just to know that, you know, there was a, a, a strong enemy, you know, of God's people named Caesarea. You know, because the, the, the Hebrew is a language of uh, uh, um, pictures, you know, and numbers with, you know, pictures with numerical, you know, uh, weight to them. So 5776, you know, it, it, the, the, the six, the, the, no, the, six, the uh, picture for the number six is a nail amongst everything else, but it's also a tent peg. So in that story of Deborah in Judges 4, you know how that story ended, that God used a woman. I mean, Deborah, you know, you know, called for the man Barak to say, look, you know, this is the time, you know, for the enemy of the nation to be finished. Them talking, interacting before, just interacting one another at a level of one another. So I put it this way, horizontal level. So we're talking to one another. But the instruction was to look up, lift up your eyes. So just... By the mercies of God, I happened to lift up my eyes and I saw an incredible sight. There had been a portal, a big opening in the sky, but it was just about closing. And I saw this great big ball and it was painted black and white. And as I began to, you know, um, wait on the Holy Spirit for interpretation of the fullness of what I saw, God began to show me that black and white is really the color for, you know, strategy chess. And what is a ball, you know, game. And God said, this is a year of my game. It's a year of strategy. I think somebody heard me over here. It says it's a year of strategy. It's a year of my game. I, I, I thought somebody would have been excited. I said, God says it's a year of his game. So the enemy is not going to play games with us anymore. He said, as we began to worship, all I wanted to do was just to have a really lavish breakfast. Kalamahandelelebasahandai. That's just the desire I had in my heart. How I wanted to celebrate my birthday. Now, being a prophetic person, being a person, let me say, working out my sonship, as many as are led by his spirit. These are the sons of God. My, the desire of my heart is just to be right where God is. And I, there was just something about setting a lavish table, Kali Mahandaya. And that's all I wanted to do. And God gave me the opportunity to do that. And in the midst of this stuff, we're praying, and I looked to my right, and there I saw Catherine Kuhlman. She was standing to my right. And I looked to my left, I saw the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa. And that would be about the third time I've seen him here. In the times of the two elections, I would see him and the great host, um, witness, uh, cloud of witness, Nigerian you know, leaders have gone to be with the Lord, praying in heaven for us. 
But I thought, no, I've never heard this name. Kalima Satahanda can comprehend the depth of his grace. And as I call that name, people in the room knew him, Baba Lola. And he dropped this towel. And when we Googled this man's name, he began to tell me great things that makes me understand that this is not an ordinary breakfast with a king. Hallelujah. We began to read that this man was a revivalist. We began to read that like 67 dead people were raised in his ministry. We began to read that this man, hospitals emptied out, I think in a kitty state. You know, I mean, the whole church was completely reconstituted. Everything was completely reprogrammed. There was a major recalibration, you know, and this man is the man that planted the CAC. So I began to understand that if people have been found faithful, mature enough to handle that mantle and the Lord summoned him to drop it and that mantle has been dropped in this land. I thought somebody would have been excited. So again, the dead will rise in this land. Again, blind eyes will open. Again, deaf ears will hear. Again. God, people made ready for the day of the Lord. A people made ready for the day of the Lord. I say you have been made ready. Psalm 110 tells us what we have to do in the day of his power. His people must be volunteers. Heaven and earth are in perfect alignment for the birthing out of this people, of this church. A new church coming out of the old. But Jesus taught us that he will not pour new wine into old wine skin. There is a mentality, there is a mindset, there is a, a, a need for a paradigm shift. You and I must be ready. You and I must make ourselves volunteers. You and I must, in faith, believe. So, the great cloud of witnesses, the Catherine Coleman's, the late Archbishop Benson Itahosas, will not only, will no longer just be a reference point and we stop there, but we must be a people that seek to do greater than they did. If you think that just a few people gathered and they prayed and there was an earthquake. If you think that the shadow of a man healed the sick on the street. Shadow of a man. Just shadow of a man. Philip would be walking on the street. If you think that there was so much demonstration of power by a few people that a sorcerer wanted to buy the power. Simon said, look, how can I get this power? If you think that just by handkerchief creative miracles were performed if you think that uh, 120 people by chapter 7 of the 17 of the story had already turned the world upside down and this is the heritage of you and i it is our inheritance that we expect god in manifestation it is our inheritance thy kingdom come oh god Thy will be done. We are not going to buy this thing. Jesus told his disciples, he said, it's not an external kingdom. It's not something built with bricks and mortar. He said, the kingdom of God is inside of you. You just need to express it. And I believe that we have come to a time of fullness. For this age, I believe that we're in a time of fullness, of war. That has been written in this time. That time and space have emptied out, exhausted, fulfilled all that God has written. And that you and I, today, our heart positioning has to be, Lord, revive your works in the midst of the days. The wind of revival blew at a time. Hallelujah. After 800 years, of a prophecy that the hearts of the fathers will be turned to the sons and the hearts of the sons will be turned to the fathers. For if that did not happen, he will smite the land. Say so there has to be succession. There has to be succession. So how come the spirit of Elijah will come? The spirit of Elijah will come. It will do its work. It will give you a heart to believe you can do greater than the fathers, the mothers of faith. It's like I'm on my own today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're really living in the days of impossibilities becoming possibilities. 
I, I don't know how I can transpose what I'm seeing, that everybody can catch it, but there is one that is coming that will really open this up for us. I really believe, I believe so strongly in my heart that we are living in a year of turning in this nation and we must pray, Lord, give us strength to turn back the battle at the gate. We must stand on Isaiah 28, 7. Lord, give us the heart to turn back the battle at the gate that we can take back. So there is an army that has emerged. A people of God who know that they're not just called to attend ceremonies, but that they are an army indeed. That they are a people that must understand their responsibilities as stewards. That we have been given the earth to manage. As long as we are in Nigeria, there must be strategy to replenish. Fill the earth and replenish it. That wherever there is devastation, be it power, be it fuel, that we're not just complainants, but the Lord will give you strategy. Listen, there is wisdom that God cannot give anyone that is not in covenant with him. And this is the time to put out our heads to say, God, this is the day of your power. I am willing. It's a technological advancement. God is waiting for a people. It happened to Daniel. God was about to bring credibility to prophetic ministry in his time. He was a man in covenant with God, a Hebrew, being brought up in the court of an unbelieving king. There is no excuse. Kalamasa Handaya. Even if a sorcerer is in charge, there is no excuse. Our light just has to shine. Our light just has to shine. Brightly and brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Your light has to keep shining. Your light has to keep shining. Because there is coming a day where the king will demand more than he's ever demanded. That's what happened to Daniel and that brought him to prominence. He was brought to prominence by strategy. The king said, look, you sorcerers and enchanters, it's been all right to have you guys. You have ruled and you have reigned in Persia. You have, taught, you have been able to interpret my dreams because I've had to tell you my dreams. But God Almighty, who is the game changer, he was changing the game. This is the year of, again, God the game changer, changing the game. And the king said, now you tell me my dream. Because to tell me my dream, you got to be me. You must have dreamt it with me. Because the one that gives the dreams was making room for his people. I said, God's making room for you. God is making room for you. He has already made room for you. He has made room for you. He has made room for you. God has made room for you. To revive a thing is to bring it back to life. To revive a thing is to bring it back to its effectiveness, its usefulness. And only the Lord can do this. Revive us, O oh God, in the midst of the years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So this is just really unveiling for you. Every day, every year has the purpose of God. Purpose of God filled, you know, into those days. Time and space, God has filled with activities because he's God all by himself. We look in creation what he did. You know, he, he, everything he made, he set a boundary. He set a boundary for everything he made. He gave it functionality. Night you are this. Day you are this. Sea you will do this. Earth you will do this. Firmament you will do that. Everything he created, he set a boundary around it. And he gave function. And then when he created man, he said, you look after all of this stuff. All of this, you look after it. These are the days again to see the wondrous works of God in our nation. And you and I must be. You know, th th these are days for audaciousness. Hallelujah. For those that know their God to carry out exploits. These are the days for those that know their God to be strong. To be strong because it is not by power, it's not by might, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. These are the days of great joy. These are the days of oh, the impossible becoming possible. His kingdom 
His kingdom is with us. Hallelujah. These are the days to walk on water again. Hallelujah. These are days. Kalima Sakata Mahandai. To come out of discouragement. To come out of hope deferred. To come out of every form of limitation. The enemy will do his bit. But you must do your bit. Hallelujah. You must do your bit. You must be strong. You must be willing to carry out great exploits. It is a day of his power. His people must be willing. It's a year of strategy. Mantles are being dropped here. Mantles are being dropped. Mantles are being dropped. Many are going to be translated. Batons are being given. Who is ready to run for God? Who is ready to catch his mind in education? Who is ready to catch his mind? For agricultural sector, who's ready to catch his mind? In the oil and gas sector, who's ready? Who is ready? Who's going to say, God, I'm willing. I'm not a businessman. I'm not a, a businesswoman. I just want to be a repatriator of your kingdom resources. I just want to bring back what belongs to you, to the original intent that you had in creation. Who's ready? Who's ready to take the risk? Father, I just want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for all that you have said for today. I want to thank you for the words that must be spoken. I want to thank you, O oh God. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. I want to thank you. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you for that which must be birthed out. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit of Reformation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to invite Nkechi. I'm going to invite one of my um, daughters. She's just going to share a few things with us. And then our speaker will come. I celebrate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am celebrating you. You have to feel celebrated. You have to feel celebrated. You are God's kings and priests. This is the day of his power. You have to be willing. You have to be willing to bring change where you are. You have to believe it. It's the year of his strategy. There is a strategy in your hand. Come on. There is a strategy for you to win for God. I say you are a winner. You are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. And it's a day appointed by God. <laughs> My mom has said it all. Um, let me start. I'm here to talk about the way God has been moving with Nehemiah Company. Nehemiah Company is a company under the mentorship, a company of people under the mentorship of Reverend Obi Pax Hari. He has been moving with us, as Reverend has told us, by the Hebrew calendar. So, um, so Nehemiah Company operates by the Hebrew calendar. It started from a prophecy given to our mentor, Reverend Obi Pax Hari. And we have been moving. So every month, we welcome the, a new month. We celebrate. We offer God our first fruits of ourselves, of our worship, of our heart. We did this for a year on the Grego Roman calendar. That's the calendar we are used to, the January to December calendar. Then after a year, by alignment, divine alignment, God moved us into the Hebrew calendar. And we found out that God would give us a date on appointed time. When we come, we realize it's actually an important date in the Hebrew calendar. So the prophecy came and God kept confirming it. So in obedience, we had to move in. We have to be where God is leading us. This month, the Hebrew calendar happens to be Nisan. When I say Nisan, everybody would, a lot of you wonder what's Nisan. But 
Nisan is that month when God said to Moses, this shall be the first of the months. So it was, it, it was um, then, it was a seventh month. So it was like God coming in July to a people and telling them, this shall be the first of the month. So it happens that, of course, January, everybody says, Happy New Year. But the people God has spoken to already know that July is indeed the New Year. So you see, in September, they celebrate their New Year because that's when they start counting from creation. But when it comes to Nisan, the seventh month, that is the new year God has given them. When God called them to be his people, when God decided that they would walk in his time and not according to the times of man. The beautiful thing, there are a lot of things about Nisan, but the beautiful, the most beautiful for me is that Nisan is the Passover. When God went through Egypt, he broke the arm of Egypt. He brought out his people from slavery so that they can achieve the destiny of nationhood he had kept for them. You know, God gave Abraham a promise of a nation, but in an location, he appoints, you know, our places. They, can't, they couldn't have achieved that promise outside the location. From famine, they went to Egypt, but when the time was, had come, God had to bring them out to fulfill the destiny of nationhood. And as long as they were in Egypt, they couldn't fulfill it. They were just a group of slaves. So in Nisan, he came. He said, this is the beginning of your nationhood. This is the beginning of the year. And this is Nisan. And we all know of Passover. Passover was when he concluded the judgment of the gods of Egypt. The tenth plague. Ten is the number for completion. So with the tenth plague, it was a complete judgment of the gods of Egypt and everything. That was when Pharaoh said, this night you must leave. And I'm happy to announce to you today is the 15th of Nisan. It is Passover. There is no coincidence in God. This date was picked months back at random to us, but not to God. Because this is a day appointed by him. Passover looks far. But Passover is a Christian festival. Because Passover, Christ, our Passover lamb, gave up his life. That we may be redeemed. That we may be, come a people reconciled to God. A holy nation to him. So Passover is a Christian festival. Jesus was crucified at Passover. Because if we go to Luke, it said, the apostle said, where shall we eat the feast of the unliving bread? And that is the feast of Passover. And on Passover, he shed his blood. He gave his life. 15th of Nisan. And you know, the interesting thing is that when God made a covenant with Abraham, when he said, split the animals, and he walked through, the Jewish people say it's the 15th of Nisan. So it's a journey that did not start today. So we stand, we come here today as the fulfillment of that promise. There are a lot of key blessings of Passover. I can name them. There's re the first is redemption. Because if we are not redeemed, we cannot even share in the blessings of Abraham. We cannot share in the blessings of God. We cannot share in the kingship, the priesthood, the prophetic calling of God. We cannot have access for the blood grants us access. We stand here, we raise our hands and worship. We go before our Father in confidence because the blood grants us access. He has torn the veil. And we can enter where even the high priest could not enter. For Jesus, our high priest, invites us in. It's a time of deliverance from Egypt, from oppression, from slavery from the things that keep us back to fulfillment of destiny. Because if you are in Egypt and you're a slave, you cannot be the nation God has called you to be. So Passover is the time to step out. I know it's in the month of Nisan that they entered the promised land. So it's, this is the month, not just to step out of Egypt, but to step into the promises. It is a time God judges evil 
defeats evil. You know, Colossians 2 tells us what Jesus did. He wiped our sins. He triumphed over the enemy. He made a public show of them. Total defeat. For this reason, the Son of Man was made manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. He destroyed it. And in rising, he defeated death. He holds the key to death, for he is life. A time of repentance. He did not pay the price that we live in sin. He paid the price that we be a holy people. He said, be a perfect like your heavenly father is perfect. We are not called to be a sinful people. We are called to be a perfect people, holy like God. For his grace is sufficient. You know, in the Hebrew tradition, during Passover, you remove leaven. You know le what leaven means? For them, leaven symbolized corruption, defilement, and sin. So they used to remove leaven. Then St. Paul tells us, Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with leaven of vice and malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of purity, nobility, honor, and sincerity, and unadulterated truth. So it's a time to remove the leaven, to cast away those weights, those little foxes, those things that keep weighing us down, those things that keep keeping us back. It's a race. We fall, we rise, but we keep pressing on to the finish mark. Wings of revival. It's a journey. You know, the Bible says you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. The Orthodox Jewish Bible writes, Thou sendest forth thy Ruach, HaKodesh. They are created. And that renews the face of Adama. That's the root word for Adama. So when they say earth, it's not just the ground. It's earth inclusive of man. So we see, so it's a journey for us. In the beginning, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Then God said, let there be. And there is. Then, he wanted to do something new, apart from the regular creation. He created man in his own image and likeness, so it's something new. He breathed into man, his spirit, and man had life. Then he came to a time when the wickedness in the world grieved him. So he said, I will end and start over. So the floods came from up, from down. Then... Noah, the Bible says, then God remembered Noah. He had told Noah to build an ark. For the Bible to say, then God remembered Noah. If God had not remembered Noah, Noah would not have survived. If the water had continued. So the water ceased. But the water didn't just stop. The Bible writes, then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. Then there's this... Um, mm, the, um, the Jewish Bible, I got this from a Jewish website. They, are, they try to do translation, transliteration, that's trans, translating from Hebrew. To, and they said, and God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God caused a spirit to pass over the earth and the water subsided. So it was like it was a creation. There was water, there was chaos. So the spirit came. The water subsided and a new earth appeared. Because at creation, the earth appeared from the waters. 